Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be going to the nether. Well, at least that's one of the things we're gonna be doing. Also getting some automation set up. So I hope you guys are ready. So today I'm prepping myself for age three. We don't have much left before we can get there. Um, so what I need to definitely do is get some of the basic stuff done. We need a couple of anvils. I know it sounds really weird. We actually need a regular anvil on our own, so that'll be something I'm gonna work on later on. Uh, but we need our anvil. We also need to smash some steel leaf. So if we turn these into plates, we can then turn these into the rods. So that makes it a lot easier. We don't actually have to cast these out. We could cast them out, but I think this is going to definitely be a faster way of doing it, as we can just toss these on here, and it's just so much quicker. We don't have to wait for them to melt and cast and all that. We only need four of them anyways, so this is probably going to be an easier way to do that. Um, and then after this, I pretty much have just about everything else. I think the only thing that's going to take a little bit of time is going to be the smelting down of the... Um, fiery ingots that we're going to need. Uh, so I'm going to need 16 iron for this. And the more I look at it, the more I'm like, you know what? I actually might be out of iron. I always do that. I, I think I'm actually getting, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm out of iron at this point. I have a lot of gold, just not as much iron. Oh no, I have iron. I have plenty of iron. Look at that. <laughs> it was all hiding from me. All right. So we're almost done. Let's go ahead and smash this down. There we go. And uh, yeah, I want to show as much of this crafting as possible because this is some of the uh, the cool crafting, or at least that's what I want to call it. So here is the fiery ingots. Right, and we need to turn these into an engine. Well, no, we need to turn it into a gear. Um, but yeah, we don't have access to a metal press yet, so we have to do it the old-fashioned way. Throwing it in here, four is going to equal a gear. So we are going to need our gear cast. So might as well throw that in here. Perfect. And yeah, let's go ahead and, and get the gold out of here. And we'll throw all 16 of these in there. Because four of these will equal uh, one gear. So we're going to need four gears. So we're going to need 16 total ingots. So I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, cooked up. They're going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and cast out... Uh, I'm going to cast out the rest of this gold. Actually, probably just use ingots, right? That would probably be the better thing to do. I could use blank side... If you accidentally click gold here, it'll actually cast out a flat blank that we don't need. Um, I don't know if it's considered a plate cast. Shouldn't. Actually, might be. Man, it's, it's going to be so nice when we can actually automate this system and we don't need to worry about it anymore. Oh, man. One more ingot left. Look at that. And these are already almost done. Um, now, you can go ahead and actually start casting this before all of your stuff is finished. Um, it will once it reaches the amount of fluid in here, then it will uh, will eventually cast. So we could ca technically cast three ingots worth in here, and then as soon as the fourth ingot's done, then we can go ahead and hit this again to finish up the cast, and it'll automatically know. So there's really no you don't have to wait if you really don't want to. And we're getting kind of low on lava. I might actually need to go grab that lava bucket that we had and bring that over here from last episode. And there we go. We're getting our last piece out. Man, we are getting really close to getting into the next age. Oh, and I think the next age kind of opens up as far as like automation goes and things like that. Now we have, uh, you might be wondering and, and seeing, well, I, I, I haven't done a lot of this stuff. Well, there's still stuff in this age that we need to do. For example, we will need to get into extended crafting. That is something that is going to be a definite, which means we're going to have to, you know, seek out more iron. But me moving into this next stage, I believe, gives me access to tools that I can use to automate the smeltery, which is going to make things a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. So that's kind of what I'm pushing for. Um, that's why I'm kind of rushing through this part. Believe me, there's a whole lot of content further on in the next few ages. Um, but getting past these early stage ages are really just kind of getting, letting you kind of branch out if you didn't already or if you haven't already experienced these mods and uh, kind of getting to know these mods as we're going to dive into the more uh, in depth later on. So I think that's about it. I think the only thing I'm missing is this right here. I did go back to the between lands, went ahead and cooked up that that crimson uh, ore that we had um, the same way we did the other one for getting our original smeltery. Um, and this is pretty simple here. There's our seared furnace controller. Now uh, a seared furnace 
is uh, basically a, a another furnace. <laughs> it's actually, I mean, exactly what it is. Um, and it's it's pretty quick as well. And there's also the uh, the other one that holds a lot of liquid. Um, that's another nice uh, thing from Tinkers. But let's go ahead and take a look. So I have just about everything. Last thing I think we need are gold chests. And then if I take a look here, all we need is our gas tiers, which I think I have just thrown in uh, a chest somewhere over here. I know I have gas tiers, yeah. We had ended up getting a lot of gas tiers from that. Um, the your gas tower. So as far as I know, this is pretty much it. All we need is light. And we already have the altar for everything, so we're about to go into the next age. And if we if we kind of understand how this is going to work, we're making a coal engine, right? Which means Steve's carts. And if you don't know what a coal engine is really good for, well, you're going to find out. Because Steve carts is a wonderful mod that takes a lot of time to create the carts, but is super useful. You can pretty much create... Um, unlimited resources, uh, which sounds kind of crazy, but yeah, you can farm trees or crops or whatever you may want. You can create crop or you can create tree farms that automatically refill itself. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty powerful. So, uh, we have a little bit of time to spare before it is nighttime. So I'm going to go ahead and get some other things done and, uh, like farm, grab a bit of these crops and stuff. And, uh, I'll see you guys when it's nighttime. So if we take a look here, you can see I don't have enough starlight, but... That's something that I can fix, and I had been working on it. While I was waiting, I was able to get this done. Um, so, let's go ahead and uh, finish this up. I need a little bit more of my sooty marble, and we should be ready to go. I went ahead and made my spectral relays and glass lenses. All we gotta do is add our sooty marble here, and we're pretty much done. All we gotta do is throw these on, and that should be enough to propel this with starlight. I believe that might be in just enough. If not, things are gonna get a little bit more complicated, but I think this is like either just enough or just barely enough. Is it? Is it full night? It is fully night out. All right, and this isn't working. So the only thing left to do is to take this whole setup and build it up higher. And I think the best way to go about doing that is to just sort of put this whole build on stilts. Um, is probably going to be the best thing to do. Now, as far as a tank, I think we have some tanks, don't we? Um, I could make some seared tanks, and we could store some of this uh, stuff in the seared tanks, I think. Retains liquid. Yeah. I think this will hold it. I don't want to put it in a chiseled tank. That only holds like one bucket, I think. But I think a seared tank, I think that's enough to hold this. And we need to... Basically, take this a little higher. Oh, wow. Make a wish. That's a shooting star. Look how cool that is. That is so wicked. Wow, I've never seen it look like that before. That is... That is some epicness right there. Look at the particle trail. Oh, I like that. Very, very cool. So I did move everything up a little bit, and it's actually really nice, because when I jump off my island, I actually am still flying higher than this. Um, you can see that I raise it up. I think I raise it about 32 or so blocks higher than it was. And this will really be dramatic. This thing is full. Um, it, that's really, really goes to show how dramatic it is. Just bringing this up higher than where it was at. Um, it really does change the amount of starlight and it really makes these work a lot better. Everything just works better when it's higher. So with that in mind, we should be able to now get everything ready to go. Um, I think we're just about ready. I need my anvils, um, and I think that's just about it. I need this. We don't need the living room anymore. Anything else I need? I think this is literally it. Uh, oh, we're missing our gas tiers, which are hiding from us over here. All right, is that it? We're still missing our furnace. Of course we are. There we go. All right, all of this ready to go, and look at that. We can now craft it. Oh, this is so nice. Look at this. We are, effects, we are effectively about to enter in to the next age, which I would call more of a industrial age, hopefully. It's been a while since I've played this, so remembering exactly what age three unlocks is kind of up in the air. I, I'm pretty sure, though, we get access to more automation stuff, and I even think we get access to a storage system. 
which will be really handy once we get into that. Oh man, but I think we have a lot of mining ahead of us as well. That is going to be another thing. We have a lot of mining, which is now made a lot better since we have this maze breaker, which has efficiency and fortune on it. All right, as soon as we pick this up, be prepared for the lag because we're about to unlock some new stuff. Oh boy. And training with coal. That's right. Welcome to age three. We are now here. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at what this opened up. Oh yeah, definitely some new stuff like ore excavation, for example. Um, and we also have some more ore. And we also get a little bit industrial, as you can see right here. Um, I'm not seeing the storage just yet. That might actually be an age four four thing I think I don't remember actually I could probably look because we would have the uh, we'd have the stuff unlocked right so I guess we're still going to be living with our storage at the moment which will be fine because I think I'm going to organize it here soon and we're going to start using some uh, some drawers to better organize ourselves. it's actually going to help us out later on too the more drawers we set up um but yeah, taking a look at this. All right, so we're going to be getting into better with mods just a little bit more. Um, we start to get more industrial, so this means we're probably going to need an island that gives us more space, or we're going to start utilizing some more of the underground sort of areas that we've built off, which is probably going to be the case. Um, not a lot of this stuff is going to require like a super large amount of space. Um, these modular uh, machines, these are pr pretty cool. Like these are custom made machines that uh, Darkosto had set up or, or any of his team has set up. And you can basically, with this mod, as a uh, pack developer, pretty much make a machine that can do whatever you want to do and require a specific blocks to be able to build it. Very cool mod. Also another mod that is made by the same dev that makes Astral Sorcery, which is Hellfire PvP. Pretty cool. Pretty cool overall. Um, but yeah, let's take a look here. So we get into immersive engineering. A little bit more we're gonna be definitely needing to do that that is gonna get us some creosote oil um, getting us some charcoal getting us some steel ingots uh, we get access to a storage drawer controller which is uh, a must um, that's why we're definitely gonna get into some storage drawers as you can see but we have to get into immersive engineering first and this is the trail that we're going to be taking um, which is going to lead us into this right here this is a small ore sample we're gonna be drilling for oil to hopefully find some oil and getting ourselves started with immersive engineering. Along the way though, we have ore prospecting, which we're gonna be able to get um, limonite, platinum ore, uh, galena, and then bauxite ore, or aluminum. Um, and then we also have access to sieve carts, which is really useful. Also, we get to go to the nether. It says travel to the nether. Pre-built portal exists in hot biomes such as desert and savannas. Uh, now remember, the world is set up with a logistical heat map. So actually it's not set up with a logistical heat map. Um, that will actually need to be something that uh, that I can I can send to Darkos to, to fix. These are like little small things that are in the works still with this mod pack. And it's just slowly like converting some things over to the, um, like it's just converting things over to this like sky version of this mod pack. So there are these like small details that uh, don't actually exist anymore in this particular version. And one of those is the actual sky or the, the logistical heat map. It's, it's not a thing. Um, so that will be something that I can report. And I do recommend doing that. If you do experience any issue in this mod pack, you can always click over here and you can click on the report bug issue here. And then that will take you directly to the Git page where you can, of course, uh, create your uh, issue or create your re uh, your report, whether that's a crash or whatever that may be. And uh, from there, of course, make sure you fill out everything as listed in a template and give as much detail as possible. That that always helps makes mo make mod packs better. It wouldn't like these mod packs, they wouldn't be uh, very good without your uh, your input. So it definitely helps to uh, throw your input out there and. Uh, it's don't don't think that your input doesn't matter because believe me it does so just like it mentioned over here we have a area that is already ready to go um it's actually not too far away from our base which is really nice um we can take a look and you can see this is our home base here i'm gonna go ahead and add a marker 
And then we're going to set this to portal and we'll say nether just like that. So that will mark another location. Now, later on, we'll be able to put another portal in our own base if we so feel inclined. Um, but in here, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some resources that we can go after. Look at that. That is a portal. Now, I'm kind of curious to see what this dimension looks like. Is it going to be a topography dimension where it's sky islands, similar to all the other dimensions? I mean, that's something that we're going to have to check out. So let's go ahead and I'll meet you guys inside. So here we are in the nether and uh, yeah, it looks like a topography place. It definitely does. Uh, I'm gonna get my sword ready because I don't know if these guys are evil or not. What are, that looks horrifying. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're on, a, uh, we're on an island. This isn't actually too bad. We actually, it seems like we've got a pretty decent island here. And as you can see, it already marked our nether portal on the map for us, which is super handy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm assuming these islands are going to be the places where we need to go. By the way, I love the way lava looks in this shader. Um, I call it the cheese, the lava cheese, because that's exactly what it is. Um, I wonder, though, on this island, is there going to be any particular type of ore? Or are we just kind of, you know, left to guess? Also, I hope our Volarkite actually works here. That's uh, something I don't know. I, I hope it does. Uh, that's already got me kind of questioning whether or not that's the case. I have not gotten any lift. And I do know that, that we will have access to a, um, a different type of uh, flight here soon. So that's something that we can definitely look forward to. As far as like mining in here though, I think I want to grab some of this netherrack of course. But I, I'm, I was hoping to find some like quartz that maybe was available right from the start. I don't know much about these guys though. Like what are, are these sheep we can pick up? Okay. Um, but shearing them, what is the she what does shearing them do? Okay, so we ended up getting this wool, which is fireproof apparently. We can cook it into regular wool. Huh, not bad. I wonder if we can bring these guys through the portal into our base. That'd be nice. So yeah, I'm gonna probe around here. I'm, oh, yep, yeah, hey, there we go, look at that. We do have nether quartz, um, harvestable. So it's telling me it's not harvestable with the current pick that we have, which is kind of interesting. I think it's just because of the, uh, maybe we need diamond or something? Oh, we probably actually need platinum or something higher like that. Um, let me go ahead and Block that off. Uh, but yeah, that's that's perfect. At least we know we have quartz like right there. That is going to be nice. Very, very nice. Well, I'm kind of scared to use my Volar Kite, so I don't think I'm going to <laughs> for right now. Because I don't think that I will get lift. Because like usually you'll get lift right after doing that. I'm not feeling that. Ooh, wow, them guys are a lot more scary when they're nice and bright. So to me, it looks like we need to go resource hunting and what better thing to do than to make a better ore prospector. That's right. We need to find those ores and uh, the best way to do that is this right here. Now, if you're interested in knowing where they're going to be, uh, it should tell you roughly in here where those uh, particular biomes are gonna be. And of course, use your biome finder to, to of course find those biomes. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely need to find some of this, which is redstone, which right now I'm not super concerned about redstone because we have a bunch of it, uh, but I am concerned about getting some limonite, platinum, galena, and bauxite ore. All of those different things are gonna be things that are important to us. So we need to go find them and find them all and collect as much of it as we can. So our first stop is this jungle biome over here because we should be able to find some limonite ore in this biome, very likely. Uh, at least we should. I don't know why we wouldn't. Oh boy. Um, and there's definitely some uh, some sounds you can hear down below. But I think, ah, right here. Here we go, limonite. So we should be able to find some, yeah, directly below this. Um, and I do have a shovel on me, which makes this a lot easier. However, I do want to be safe. But uh, because I have this pick, oh, it makes things so much nicer as far as collecting this stuff goes. Um, are we getting close? Oh, we're at gravel. Well, I hope it doesn't take us all the way down. And... 
granite. There we are. Here's the limonite. Perfect. Now, ore excavator is going to be really nice. Um, but to get this ore excavation, um, there's a couple different ways. There's an enchantment way. You can get an, an actual enchantment on here. Um, is this called... There we go. A excavate modifier. Um, as you can see, it's going to require all these different things um, to make. So we're going to need octane. Um, the modularium? I don't know too much about this. Alloying. So it is aluminum, iron, and redstone together. Um, and that'd pretty much be the only thing I think we would have to, to get. Um, the uh, cyramite. This stuff... Um, or sh uh, sh yeah, Sharamite. This stuff is from the Between Lands uh, and is just gained by mining in that dimension. And there's steel plates, so all of this is actually not too bad to get. We get 25 of them, which is actually kind of nice. That will get us ore excavation though on a um, Tinker's Construct tool. So once we get that, it'll be a little bit nicer. But for right now, I'm okay with just mining this out. Uh, I do, however, have a Tinker's Hammer which does make this a little bit better. However, it is still rather slow. Um, and actually, I don't know if, uh, like, mining this, how many did we get out of that? Just one? Save so six. That's seven. So I ended up getting some iron out of this. Oh, this because this gives us nickel and iron. Oh, that's right. It, it can give us both. Uh, which is actually really nice, because I needed iron, so <laughs> it kind of makes sense. That's uh, that's actually perfect. It's going to work out just fine. So before we end, I do want to get some automation done, and that is going to require upgrading our pick just a little bit. Um, now, the only material that I've seen that can support mining obsidian level is going to be the fiery ingots. And I'm pretty sure I can cast out a pick head for this and just replace our current pick head. And that should be enough to get our pick to that mining level. Um, however, I did not see like there being um, an option here for a sharpening kit, but it may not show in here. But honestly, you could potentially use a sharpening kit on it that would get it there. I just don't know if that's a thing we've unlocked yet. But we do get a few different things. Auto smelt is one on our pick, which is pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of good, good things for it being um, the headpiece. But auto smell is pretty nice. That's going to automatically turn it into ingots and stuff whenever we're uh, mining, which is, it saves us a step. So anything that can speed things up is going to be really nice. So the pick head is being casted out. There we go. And let's try this out uh, for on our pick. Let's go ahead and do this. Throw this on here. And there we go. So this now is obsidian level, which means we can actually mine obsidian and get it. Um, but what I want to do is go to the nether. I want to grab some quartz because that's what that's the only thing we really miss uh, We're missing out on um, in order to get a clock set up for this to automate our faucet I think that's about it. So because we have this pick we can now mine things like this um, And we can grab this particular obsidian and we can convert it with a chisel into normal obsidian That is that's gonna be one way that we can do this But I also need to hop back into the nether let me go ahead and grab that obsidian real quick. Um, we're gonna hop into the nether and we're gonna go ahead and get that uh, that quartz. So with our diamond level tools, we weren't able to mine this, but now that we have the obsidian level, we can totally mine this and get uh, pretty much all the quartz we need. I only needed four, so we can move on now that we got four, but uh, let's go ahead and hop back into our crafting area and get, uh, get this thing built. So if you're confused at where I got glowstone, you can actually go back to the Twilight Forest and inside the like dome areas where you'll find a bunch of ore, um, you'll find glowstone. Actually, glowstone just opened up entirely. Um, so anywhere that you may not have seen it, you will see it now. Um, so all I need is I think four pieces of glowstone cooked up and we should be able to get ourselves some redstone alloy plate. Now I did need to make Constantine, which is copper and tin, I believe copper or copper and nickel um and then now that we have this i just kind of went four and four and eight for some of the stuff like i think redstone i did eight um, i probably should do eight with the glowstone as well anyways this thing should mix itself up and uh, get everything working eventually i'll get a better um smeltery set up that'll be before long um and hopefully it won't use as much lava because man we are going through lava like it's nothing 
Um, and I think we can add more tanks of lava. We don't, we can get away, I think, with more than one tank. Let's see. Let's get this last bit done. I'm just kind of waiting, and we should start to see red alloy plates form. And there we go. Molten redstone alloy. Right here, we already have six ingots of it. So I do need to cast out also four aluminum plates. And so I'm going to get those done, and then I'm going to cast out the other ones. And we're pretty much ready to make a redstone clock. Look at that. With all that crafted, we now have ourselves a redstone clock. And you may be asking, what do, we, what do you need a redstone clock for? Well, let me kind of show you. Um, right here, we can go ahead and grab our ingot cast. Throw it in here. And right now we have redstone, we have redstone alloy, and we also have Constantine. Let's go ahead and stack Constantine and redstone alloy. I would have to do this by hand. Well, not anymore. I can slap this bad boy on here, set this to um, always on, and then change the duration down to pretty low. Um, I, I used to know the exact number this needed to be set to. But this right here should be able to output. Now we need to set it to down, to output on down. And you can see it is going to cast this out. Just like that. With the redstone pulse. And it does it automatically. And since we have the hopper down here, I don't have to worry about it. So basically this whole smeltery system is automated. So guys, today we actually got quite a bit done. I'm super happy with all of the work that we've done so far. Of course, there's lots more to come, including in like an upgraded storage system, getting ourselves going. How did a cat get on our... It's a demon cat. Uh, I have a feeling this is not a good cat. We'll see about you. I don't know. This... I... I don't know. We'll see about that cat. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, as always, I do want to give a huge shout out to, of course, one of my Patreons. And the Patreon of the day is going to be Felix the Bunny. So thank you so much for uh, your patronage. I really appreciate it. And if you are interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, I highly recommend checking out the description below. There's a lot of cool information down there and also links to other cool things like my Twitter, for example, or my Instagram or I don't do Facebook <laughs> or my Discord. We have a lot of cool stuff down there. Um, also my Twitch. <laughs> There's so much. Guys, I hope to see you in the next episode. You guys know how it is. If you enjoyed, please click that subscribe button if you haven't already and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I really appreciate it. Of course, I'll see you in the next one and as always, thanks for watching.